Hello and welcome to this second tutorial on Helium MIDI Sequencer. Now in this uh, video I'm going to go over the media bay. Now the media bay is a little sliding panel that you can access via the little files button at the top right of the display. And this area has three main sections. There's a clip section which uh, is where you store your MIDI clips and these are just generally uh, one channel MIDI clips. Um, with the ability to browse uh, a directory structure and we can drag and drop uh, files from there uh, onto your song. So it's great for song construction. So the media bay can hold things like uh, drum tracks, as you can see there. Uh, it can even hold um, things like uh, chord sets and things. So there are plenty of free chord packs out there that uh, have chord progressions and uh, chord sets and these can be easily imported into that clips section. Now the second section is for MIDI files um, and we can import MIDI files into this section and we can also export uh, finished songs to MIDI format using the um, songs tab. And the final tab is where we save all our song sessions so while we're working on the song we need to load and save it we, we do that in the Sessions tab. So that's in essence the Media Bay, but I want to look in detail into the Media Bay. In particular, how to load your own MIDI clip libraries and how to save off your own MIDI clips to build up your own libraries within, um, within Helium itself. Now when you purchase these MIDI clip libraries, they usually come in a zip format which contains a whole bunch of directory structures and that would be very tedious to have to recreate on the device. So if you run Helium in standalone mode and press the import options button at the bottom of the screen and pick web transfer. Now you're going to get three options here which correspond to the three tabs in the media bay we saw earlier. So if I pick MIDI clips, we're going to be presented with a URL, which I can type in my web browser. And as long as the web browser and the iPad are on the same network, um, you can transfer files between them. Now for this example, I'm running on a Macintosh, but it would work just the same running on Windows. As you can see here, I've got my desktop. I've got um, a screen preview here of what's going on on the iPad on the right. I've got my Safari web browser on the left and I'm just dragging and dropping a zip file uh, from a folder on my Mac into the Safari web browser. And you'll notice that very shortly after I drop that file, the iPad says that it has a library that's installed. And as you can see here, we have a directory structure uh, with all the same files that I showed you earlier. So it was incredibly easy. I'm going to drop a second zip file in. So that's the second uh, MIDI clip pack installed. Very quick, very easy. And if I just back up to the parent directory, we can browse that uh, expansion pack we just installed. And it's just as easy to transfer files into the MIDI songs or sessions tab by going back to this web transfer dialog and picking the relevant option and refreshing your web browser. Now, if you are one of those weird people that don't have either a PC or a Mac, you can actually do it on the device itself, and I'll show you how. If you launch the uh, Files app and look at the in the On My iPad section, you should see a Helium folder, and inside there, two other folders, Clips and Songs. And as you can see, I've placed a zip file within the Clips folder. So basically, any files you want to transfer to Helium, you put in those folders. Return back to the app, and instead of picking Web Transfer, I'm instead choosing the Import Clips and Songs option. And if we go ahead and import this, uh, a couple of seconds later, you'll see that the zip file has been unpacked into place and deleted from that Clips incoming folder. So let's take a look at the Media Bay itself and some practical examples of how to use it. And I want to start by uh, explaining how you can create your own MIDI clip libraries. And use the Media Bay to organize your clips uh, into a reusable library of components. Now, one of the great things about it is we can create our own directory structure. So I'm going to create a My Clips folder here. 
Now I've got a nice chord progression here and I want to save that. So I'm going to, within there, create a new folder for chord progressions. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this clip into the chord progressions folder. So you can see it's a multi-level uh, hierarchy. Now to save a clip, we just select the area that we want to save on the ruler. In this case, the first eight bars. And then I'm going to press the uh, export button at the bottom and I'm going to give it a name. In this case, I think it was a C minor progression, so I'll just call it C minor. And the clip is saved. So now we've got a saved copy of that chord progression. We can drag and drop that anywhere within this song, or any other song for that matter. So it's a great way of copying uh, segments of songs between songs. Now I just want to stress here that um, when you save a clip, it saves the note data and any associated controller data that you might have in that selected area. Now you may have noticed that uh, while browsing these directory structures, when you click on a folder, it opens the folder. You click on a file, it selects the file, and that allows us to do things like deleting and renaming. So how the hell do we delete or rename folders if you click on a folder and it navigates? And the answer to that is we slide either left for rename and move, or to the right to delete. So I should be able to delete this folder by sliding to the right and hitting the delete button. And just to keep things uniform, you can also slide delete to delete on files as well as folders. Now I'm going to save off another copy of this selected area as a, a, a temporary clip and show you how we can move objects around. If you select an item and press the move button at the top, it will tell you to navigate to a destination folder and then hit the move button a second time. And so that copies the file from its original location into the destination. And as you've probably guessed, you can do the same with directory structures, only this time you've got to slide, hit the move, um, and then move to the destination and paste. And that process solves the problems of, I mean, if we just drag and drop, we could never move something to directory structures deep. Now let's turn to another new feature, which will, is not available in the original release, but is up and coming. And this is the ability to preview MIDI clips on the fly. Rather than laying them down, listening to them and deciding you don't like those chords, you can actually preview them before you actually drag them onto the timeline. So to preview a chord, just simply tap and hold on the chord for about a second and it will be previewed. And again with some progressions. Once you've made your choice, just drag to the timeline. Simples. Now just be aware that the preview uh, sends the selected MIDI data to the currently selected instrument on that track. So if you're previewing a drum track, make sure you've got a drum machine on the other end of it. Now as we said at the opening of this video, the Songs tab is really where you save off or export MIDI uh, files. If you attempt to drag a MIDI file in you, from this tab, it will replace the existing song, so be careful. It does not drop at the current position because it's a whole song. And the final tab, the Sessions tab, as I explained before, is where you save off your performances. So hit the Save Session button uh, to save something off, and uh, the Load Session to load uh, an existing session and replace the current song. Uh, the session is um, MIDI data plus everything else, all the settings and everything. Now, I've opened up the files app here just to show you that you can drag and drop directly from the media bay to the files app to back up your MIDI clips or to back up your song sessions. And just to show you it going the other way, I'll just create a folder to drag into and we'll drag one of those files uh, back into the session, the songs folder. Now while the drag and drop within the app works right back to iOS 11, 
um, drag and drop between uh, the app and um, the files app is limited. I think it's it was introduced in iOS 12, so just be aware of that. So that just about sums up the tutorial on the Media Bay. Uh, more tutorials coming soon. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to thumbs up on this video. Yeah.